Today, we're talking about one of my favorite bearded dragon morphs. Let's get it. What's up, YouTube? So today's video is going to be about the leatherback morph. Obviously, you're reading the title. You already know what it's about. Um, same as the other video that I just made about Dunner, this is going to be me showing you different variations of leatherback. I also want to show you just the plain, not really plain, a normal scale bearded dragon, uh, and then adding leatherback and adding other morphs on top with leatherback involved. So you can see what it really looks like when you add leatherback to a bearded dragon and also adding Dunner and also adding translucent and also adding a bunch of other things. Let's go ahead and get into it. And the first one we're gonna start off with is the normal scale. Let's go. First things first, we got Aphrodite here. She is a hypo normal scale. And you can kind of see just like any other normal scale bearded dragon, kind of scaly. All the scales come downwards towards the tail uh, from the head. So pretty normal looking bearded dragon besides the fact that she's hypo and she's obviously a orange. Uh, but pretty nice. Now let's see what it looks like when we add leather back on top of normal scale, which is obviously just a hypo leather back. So this girl here is Daphne. She is a hypo leather back genetic stripe. And uh, obviously she can, you can see she's still orange. So leather back adds all of this smoothness going down the back. You can still see see some scaling, um, but obviously it's not as bad as a regular or a dunner. So also the side spikes right here on the side of the stomach, they almost go away the closer you get to the bottom there. So you can kind of see going from the top to the bottom, the scales kind of disappear, turning very small the closer it gets to the bottom. And that's what happens with leatherback. They get super smooth. The scaling gets reduced. You can see more of the pattern versus if you were just looking at a normal scale. I don't know why that is really, besides the fact that, you know, the scales aren't there um, causing any distraction or any anything to take away from the pattern itself. So obviously there's not much pattern on this girl here. So the next dragon I'm going to show you has the leather back, has the, the hypo, and also adding Dunner on top. So no genetic stripe. And you can see how well the pattern looks compared to if it was just a normal scale. Um, and then the last dragon, I have a few more dragons, but one of the last dragons I want to show off is going to just blow this particular combination away because I'm adding translucent on top of it and an extra dose of genetic stripe. You'll get to see that. And I think that's a pretty awesome looking bigger dragon. But again, this is Daphne, a hypo leatherback genetic stripe. Next we have Azrael, or Azrael, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and she is a hypo leatherback dunner obviously she's red she looks amazing super nice colors she used to be like brown now she's really getting those colors in obviously she still has some brown tones there but same thing with leatherback you get a reduction of scales you can see on the sides here you can see on the sides there of the stomach the scales get really reduced towards the bottom there and then we also have what happens with Dunner is you get all this extra spikiness, but Leatherback obviously takes it away. So you get reduced spiking from a Dunner. And all that creates is a lot of nice little nubs. I guess you can call them nice little nubs on the back there. Let's see how well I can show you. Yeah, nice little nubs. You can kind of see them. Little nubbies. Yeah. On the back there from the Leatherback. Come on, where are you running to? Super nice. So Leatherback just really reduces the scale regardless of the morph. Uh, obviously, Dunners are extremely spiky. So adding Leatherback to Dunner kind of undoes the Dunner morph because the Dunner is not just spike, it's also pattern. It actually makes it better because you can actually see the pattern from the Dunner morph on the Bearded Dragon when there's Leatherback. And now I'm going to show you the dad to this girl, which actually is a leatherback dunner as well. But for some reason, the leatherback didn't tone down the dunner as much as this look right here. And uh, it really left a lot of the spikiness. So I'll show you that now. Here we have Hades. Hades is a hypo trans leatherback dunner. And just like his daughter, super smooth on the back with some nubs. 
But because the leatherback didn't actually tone down the dunner all the way, you still have extreme spiking on the sides here. It still does get reduced the lower you go on both sides, you can see. And then the head is also extremely spiky, unlike the other leatherbacks that I have. And also the back, even though it's still smooth, come on, let go of the seashell. Uh, because the back is completely smooth, you still get the little nubs, but it still left a lot of the spikiness on the sides and the top of the head and all that. So it's extremely cool to have different levels of spikiness in leatherbacks. And I think the Dunner Morph actually is the one that creates different levels of spikiness in leatherbacks. There used to be different levels of spikiness in leatherbacks uh, back a long time ago. They used to call them American leathers and Italian leathers. And Italian leathers were the ones that were really, really reduced spiky. And then the American leather was the one that had the more spikiness. But now it's all been blended and they all kind of look the same now. Uh, but every once in a while you get one like this where it's extremely spiky still, even though it's a leatherback. So that's pretty cool in my opinion. Um, I'm going to show you one more Hypotrans Leatherback Dunner. And uh, we're going to add an extra morph on top. And then the last dragon I want to show you is one of my favorite bearded dragons. What's up, Hades? What are you staring at, bruh? Huh? And uh, he's going to blow everything away. Hopefully he's awake because uh, it's brumation season, baby. And a lot of the dragons are sleeping off and on. But this guy looks awesome. Let's go show you one more Hypotrans Leatherback Dunner. This little guy is Phobos, and he is also a Hypotrans Leatherback Dunner, but he's a Wiblets as well. And that doesn't really matter in this particular combo because I'm trying to show you how the spikiness got reduced on this dragon so much that you can barely see that he has any spikes on his side. It's ridiculous how unspiky this guy is even though he is a Dunner and he's also a Leatherback. So the Leatherback in this particular combo really, really reduced the spikes. Almost everywhere there's supposed to be a spike, it's a nub. And uh, that's another cool thing about this particular combination. Um, leatherback really, really undoes the Dunner morph um, when you have them combined together. In some cases, obviously the last dragon I showed you, it didn't really undo it that much. He was still super spiky, but Phobos, super nice looking dragon. Super nice colored wits, and uh, look at that color. So now let's talk about the last dragon and see what we got going on. Actually, before I show you the last dragon, I want to show this girl off. This is Celine. She is a Hypotrans Leatherback Genetic Stripe, and you can see how nice and striped she is. And I want to show off this girl to kind of progress into the next morph I'm going to talk about in this video, adding on top of it. And then I also want to talk about it a little bit because that's what the next video is going to be about is genetic stripe. So genetic stripe, you get these nice racing stripes down the back there. And sometimes the genetic stripe is so straight that you can't even see any jagged edges. It doesn't have a break in it. So some people, depending on who you ask, would call this a color stripe. And uh, some people call it genetic stripe. The color stripe is just. Um, so the way I like to describe it to people is color stripe is just a reduced genetic stripe because genetic stripe is actually line bred. It's not a morph that just popped up one day. People started breeding things with nicer stripes, nicer stripes. And eventually the stripes just became super straight. And um, people started calling them genetic stripes. So we have phantom stripe. We have color stripe. We have genetic stripe. Essentially, they're all very similar. Genetic stripe is obviously very specific. You can kind of see it uh, a lot better than you can on a color stripe. So I would still call this a genetic stripe, even though some people would call it a color stripe. The reason I do is because she came from a genetic stripe dad. So therefore, you can't really call it a color stripe because it didn't come from a color stripe parent, even though, like I said, color stripe and genetic stripe are technically the same thing. It's just a uh, reduction. So one 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 generation away from being a genetic stripe, I guess you should say. So if I bred this girl to a genetic stripe, all the babies will come out genetic stripe, or at least majority of the babies will come out genetic stripe just because of the fact that, you know, she's a genetic stripe technically. So that's really what the next video is going to be about. Um, I don't want to get too much into it right now because I um, just want to show off some nice leatherbacks right now. So last dragon, super cool looking guy. You might already know who it is because I show him off all the time. He is one of my favorite bearded dragons. I have like 20 different favorite bearded dragons, but that's besides the point. Um, 
So let's go look at him. So this is my boy Zeus right here, the Thunderbolt. He has a little bit of poop on his head. How'd you manage that, bro? Uh, but this is a Hypotrans Leatherback Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is just another form of genetic stripe. So we'll get into that in the next video. I'll kind of explain that a lot in the next video. But this guy looks super gnarly, super cool. I love the way this guy looks. Can't wait to produce a bunch of Thunderbolts next year. Hopefully the female, she's been sleeping for like three months, but hopefully we can get her awake here soon so we don't have to wait too long for some Thunderbolts. Look at that. Super nice. All right. I actually forgot to mention one key component of the leatherback morph, and that is silkies. So silkies occur whenever you breed a leatherback to a leatherback. The problem with silkies is that they require a lot more attention because of the fact they have no scales. So that is exactly what happens with silkies. When you breed a leatherback that has barely any scales to a leatherback that also has barely any scales, you get a dragon that has no scales whatsoever. The scales are what they use for protection from UV, from scratches, from everything else. It's the scales. So when you get a silky, they have problems shedding. They have problem absorbing UV rays. They have problem with any little scratch or anything like that can cause a huge ordeal with the silky. With shedding, what I've noticed is if you have a bad shedder and you're not using aloe vera or anything like that, you could potentially have a bearded dragon that can lose limbs, lose pieces of his tails, or have just stuck sheds for his entire lifetime. Um, also could have abrasion caused from the stuck shed. And then all of a sudden, it's not just a stuck shed, it's a scar. And you don't want anything like that to happen. So that's why I don't breed leatherback to leatherback. And I don't think anyone should breed leatherback to leatherback. And that's really the only thing I wanted to add to this video was to talk about silkies and why you should not breed leatherback to leatherback. And also probably why you should not buy a silky. If you want a silky and you find a silky, uh, more power to you. I just, I personally wouldn't breed for silky. So you'll never see a silky coming from me. Um, if you find someone that breeds for silkies, I would already feel kind of off about that situation because they are breeding for silkies and that's already an uh, unethical thing to do is breed something that requires extra work and possibly won't live an, an entire life just because you wanna sell something that's unique. It's only unique because it's not something people should be doing. So if you made it this far into the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. As always, peace. We got it, we got it.